OK, we're going to look at global cloning. So let's jump straight in. We've got an image here that's not particularly interesting overall, but it does have quite a nice set of steps. So we might want to use these steps in another photograph. There are, of course, a different number of ways to do this, but let's look at global cloning. So if we go ahead and choose the clone tool, let's increase the brush size, take the hardness down, and then we can alt-click to define our source. So let's start around here. Now at this point, we want to choose set global source here. Then we'll move across to our image that we want to clone to. So once again, we'll select the clone tool here, take the hardness down all the way, and this time we'll move from current layer to global. And when we hover over our image, we will see the global source area that we set in the previous document. So then, we have some other tricks up our sleeve. First of all, let's create a new pixel layer. This ensures we can work non-destructively. Next, we'll choose to flip the global source horizontally. And finally, Let's reduce the scale slightly to about 88%, that'll do. Then we can click to clone from the image that has the global clone source. So all that remains is to tidy this up a bit. So we'll go for the Erase Brush tool. And in our Brushes panel up here, we'll choose the first texture brush we come across. Then we just simply want to erase around the foliage either side of the steps, like so. And using a texture brush, just helps blend it in a bit more naturally than using, say, a round brush. OK, then the final step is just to match it tonally. So we'll add a curves adjustment and nest it into the pixel layer. Then we just want to match it tonally. So my inclination Firstly is to modify the blue channel, bring the blue shadow tones up slightly. And another little tip, if you're struggling to match the color between your initial layer and your composite layer, you can move into the channels tab here and just click, for example, composite red. And this allows you to compare the contrast of each individual channel. So as we can see here, our red channel is more or less spot on. There's really no benefit in modifying the red channel too much. So we'll move on to the green channel. Again, very little point in touching the green channel. And the blue channel, again, looks like our initial decision to modify the blue channel was more or less correct. So at this point, we can simply switch the channels back on like so. And then just to compare, we can uncheck the curves adjustment and see what the composite looked like originally. So I'll go ahead and turn curves back on. So there's a quick example of using global cloning. If you have any questions or queries, please do ask on the official Affinity Forums. Thank you for watching.